George H.W. Bush is finally letting his feelings known on his son's administration. So many people have rightly pointed out that H.W. is the smarter Bush. His presidency, he only had four years, but his presidency, in retrospect, was better than his son's presidency. It's not hard to be better than George W. Bush's presidency, but it was significantly better. It's still a stretch to call any Bush smart, in my opinion, but that's <laughs> neither here nor there. I digress from that. So in his new book called Destiny and Power, uh, this title is so douchey, Destiny and Power, The American Odyssey of George H.W. Bush. In it, he says this, quote, I don't know. Cheney just became very hardline and very different from the Dick Cheney I knew and worked with. The reaction to September 11th, what to do about the Middle East, just iron ass. <laughs> I've never heard that term before. His seeming knuckling under the real hard charging guys who want to fight about everything, use force to get our way in the Middle East. Damn. <laughs> So, not a fan of Dick Cheney. On Rumsfeld, he said this, quote, I don't like what he did, and I think it hurt the president, talking about his son. I've never been that close to him. I've never been that close to him anyway. There's a lack of humility, a lack of seeing what the other guy thinks. He's more kick-ass and take names, take numbers. I think he paid a price for that. Rumsfeld was an arrogant fellow. Okay, so you're getting a sense here. You know, you smell that? This is something that I think he's only going like 10% of how far he could go here. You know, people are rightly saying, oh, damn, like he went after them. I think if you get him in a room one-on-one -on -one and, you know, he trusts you or whatever, he he could open up more and say, no, these guys are, these guys are horrendous. Because remember, it was H.W. who did Iraq war, the first Iraq war. And what did he do? He went in there and then he left. In fact, there are, there are recordings of Dick Cheney backing up H.W. for leaving and not taking out Saddam. They were like, look, the, it, it was the right thing to do because if you topple Saddam, what's going to happen? There's going to be a power vacuum. Who's going to fill that power vacuum? You're going to rile up the sectarian tensions. They're going to kill each other. And the rest of the Middle East is going to be desta destabilized. Cheney goes on and on. So about it. It's a bad idea. And he was backing up H.W. And H.W. was right about that. At the time, Cheney was right about that. And then Cheney goes in there, and, and Bush Jr. goes in there, and they do all the fucking mistakes that H.W. is trying to avoid. So, it, it only makes sense that H.W. is now saying, Look, man, these guys are fucked up. They're narcissists. They're, they're, they didn't know what the fuck they were doing. And they're power-hungry. Now, their response was incredible. Because Dick Cheney... Uh, came out and said, I take it as a compliment. A compliment? Dude, he just said, he called you iron ass, which again is funny, I've never heard that before. He doesn't mean it in a positive way, he doesn't mean it in a like, hey, do you work out? Your ass looks good. No, he's saying you're you know, fucking a hard ass, and you want to fight, use force to get your way everywhere in the Middle East. They want to fight everything. They want to fight about everything he said about you. Dick Cheney's like, yeah, no, rock on. That's a compliment. Man, Cheney is a dark character. When you accuse him of like, hey man, are you doing all this for power and control and, you know, imperialistic reasons and your dark impulses? He's like, yes, <laughs> that's what I do. I'm Dick Cheney. And uh, Rumsfeld came out in a typical Rumsfeld way. Uh, what did he say about H.W.? He's like, well, you know, he's getting up there in age now. So we can dismiss what he says. You're only proving his point. He called you arrogant. You're like, yeah, I'm arrogant, dickish response here. He's getting up there in age. Fuck. Okay. No, H.W. is right about this, and I only wish that he went further because the point it, it's the point I've been making for years, if you take it to its logical conclusion, and if you call Dick Cheney and Rumsfeld and the neocons what they really are. They are the embodiment of a fundamentalist religious ideology. And that ideology is American exceptionalism. And that ideology is neoconservatism. And it manifests itself in the most militaristic ways around the world where they do only care about getting more power and more control and natural resources and having and being the dominant world leader. And if civilians die in the process, who cares? They die for the right reason. You know, it is, as Keith Ablo of all people, a conservative on Fox News, put it, he let it all hang out there. He said, I believe in American Jihad. We should do an American Jihad. And Dick Cheney said, 
fuck yeah, that's exactly what I do. Donald Rumsfeld said, fuck yeah, that's what I do. George W. Bush went along with them because he's an idiot and he's their fucking puppet. Dick Cheney was calling the shots from behind the scenes, as many people have pointed out, rightly. So that's the problem with these guys. And, you know, people like George H.W. Bush, who represented a more sane version of a Republican, you know, you, you guys should have fucking spoke up a long time ago because, you know, the, the so-called moderate wing of the Republican Party should have kneecapped your extremists, but he didn't do it, and now this is the toughest condemnation he has of them. It's better than nothing, don't get me wrong, but it, these guys are worse than just being iron asses and wanting to, to fight about everything. They're much more nefarious than that. Cheney is, Rumsfeld is, Bush was the useful idiot who went right along with them. And we should not only be hearing condemnations from other Republicans, but these guys should be brought up on fucking charges for war crimes, because that's what they are, war criminals.